All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Ryan Davies. I'm the head of sales here at Yada Energy. And thank you for joining us today for our Yada Know webinar series. Today is uh, kind of uh, the important one for us. Uh, it's our core competency here at Yada Energy. It's on the solar leaf. Today, we're exploring the benefits of Yada's rooftop battery breakthrough. As I mentioned, I'm Ryan Davies, head of sales here at Yada Energy. And joining me, as always, is my good friend and co-worker, Mr. Christopher Barrett, our Senior Director of Applications Engineering. When the webinar is over, don't run away too fast. We have two pieces of business we need to take care of. The most interesting probably is the Yada Swag Giveaway Prize. We'll be selecting one random attendee uh, to receive a Yada Swag Bag. So we'll be making an announcement on the individual who wins that prize uh, at the end of the webinar. Uh, and then marketing will reach out to you and get your contact information so you can get that bag of swag. Uh, also, throughout the duration of this uh, webinar today, we will be um, taking questions in the chat box there. So any questions that you have, please enter them on into the box and we'll get to them, uh, as many of them as we possibly can at the end of the webinar. I'll tell you a little bit about Yada Energy. Energy made simple. We're leading the transition to clean renewable energy by making energy simple. We were founded in March, 2017. So happy sixth birthday to us this month. Uh, we are located in Austin, Texas, and we have, it says 35, but I know we're over that 40 mark threshold. So we have more than 40 employees uh, located at the headquarters in Austin, Texas. And we have a number of awards and recognitions that are too numerous to count or go over individually. Uh, so if you're interested in those, please take a look at our website. As I said, who are we? We are Simplified Storage. Now we have a complete range of distributed solar energy technologies for specifically the commercial and industrial market. We focus solely on the CNI market. We're more than just the solar leaf, although that is our uh, core technology. We also have a wide range of uh, modules uh, as well as uh, microinverters. Um, we also, if you see in the bottom right-hand picture there, recently announced a uh, mobile EV charging station, affectionately known as REV, um, as well as your standard EV charger. So there's a whole uh, list of the library of products that we have on our website for you to take a look at. Uh, but of course, today we're going to focus on the solar leaf. We are Yoda, not Yoda. We get that clear. We get that. We can't afford the the name Yoda, uh, so we're with Yoda. But what does that mean? Uh, Yada is a prefix in the international system of units that represents a factor of 10 to the 24th power, or one septillion. The symbol for Yada is Y, and Yada is the largest decimal unit prefix in the metric system. But most importantly, Yada, not Yoda. And I'm going to hand it off there to uh, Chris. So Chris, take it away. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, and thanks, everyone, for taking time out of your day to learn more about the Yada ecosystem and uh, specifically the solar leaf. Let's dig in. As Ryan was mentioning, we are a commercial CNI uh, provider uh, solution, really, uh, for the distributed market. Uh, what we're currently working with is Yada Solar Modules, the Yada Solar Leaf, which we will dig in deeper today, uh, the Yada Dual Power Inverter, uh, the Yada EV Chargers, all of which uh, create an RTR, our distributed solution. Some of our eco partner systems, ecosystem partners, uh, we work directly with Tailsun. Tailsun actually provides uh, and manufactures a custom module for us, uh, which is a 540 watt module and also a 450 watt module, both the auto branded uh, with uh, longer leads uh, to be able to reach the solar leaf and the inverters on the roof uh, for a good solid cable management. Uh, Flex is our top tier partner uh, for the manufacture of the solar leaf uh, for us, helping us with the BMS and manufacturing of that product. Uh, Panel Claw is our preferred partner uh, for racking, on-roof racking, ballasted racking, 
where the solar leaf actually becomes uh, a ballast block or actually two ballast blocks in this particular case. Uh, and of course, AP Systems. AP Systems is our partner that provides a, a custom product, product uh, for Yada that we call the DPI, uh, which we'll learn more about as we get deeper into the presentation. Let's talk about the solar leaf. The solar leaf itself <clears throat> is a revolutionary approach to solar, distributing solar on uh, commercial sites. Instead of having a large, uh, large wood kilowatt battery, what we've decided to do is learn, take lessons learned from the microinverter world and being able to distribute that storage, that energy uh, throughout the roof, uh, as opposed to a centralized location uh, somewhere inside the building or perhaps outside the building. Uh, doing that, we're trying to simplify the installation of this process. By doing that, we're having smaller products uh, distributed throughout the roof. Um, we're also trying to minimize maintenance as well. Other piece piece is flexibility, being able to have as much or as little storage as you want, uh, being able to go back and add storage um, as needed um, as, you, as you continue using the product. Um, Safety is also a big thing for Yada. We want to make sure that we, the product is safe, as especially distributed on the roof. We use the safest uh, chemistries uh, known in the industry today. Uh, and most importantly, I think a lot of you would say we want to lower cost as well. Trying to reduce cost is a big thing in this industry. And Yada is going to be able to help you with that. This is a quick picture of the solar leaf itself. As you see here, uh, we have cooling fins on the back side of the device to be able to mitigate heat on the roof. Uh, we have inputs here for, from the module. We also have outputs to the inverter. Uh, just wanna point out these inputs here are all MC4 connections. Inputs, outputs, the unit itself is about 53 pounds. This video right here just demonstrates real quickly and I think it really succinctly uh, the Yada's ecosystem here. You're looking at the racking on the floor, or on the roof here, the Yada solar leaf uh, being placed in between the racking and again, acting as a ballast block. Uh, this right here looks as like it's 53 pounds, as I mentioned, two ballast block replacements, uh, all covered up by the module. So you can see where this product lives. It lives right there on the roof <clears throat> in that same environment as a microinverter uh, underneath the module. Specifications are as such. The solar input, right now we're saying we can put up to 750 watts of power coming from the module into the input of the device. Module compatibility today, 60 and 72 cell modules, which also includes the 120 and 144 split cell modules, as well as bifacial modules as well. What's most important here for the input is to be able to have the right voltage and current. Uh, so it's like 60, 72, 120, 144, uh, for the most part, I would say it would meet the requirement for that. The battery size is a one kilowatt hour battery rated. And as I mentioned, lithium ion phosphate, is the battery chemistry. Again, very, very safe chemistry, uh, purposely built, purposely chosen for this application for the solar leaf to live and reside on the roof. Duty cycle. People always ask, what, what is your duty cycle here? So duty cycle here, 6,000 cycles, up and down, full charge to empty uh, throughout its lifetime. If you did the math there, we're looking at almost uh, 17 years uh, of daily cycling back and forth. And we know in a commercial environment, uh, you know, they're probably cycling Monday through Friday, maybe not on the weekends. So you're looking at probably a 20 year lifetime out of this uh, solar leaf. As I mentioned, 53 pounds is the weight of the device. Again, two ballast block replacements. Instead of lugging up concrete onto the roof uh, and just putting that for a ballast block, you can actually utilize this particular product and use that in place. We're actually taking that weight and actually making it useful. Um, many people ask about how much the weight does it add here? We're looking at 2.7 to three pounds per square foot uh, distributed on the roof. So again, this, this right here is not a game changer as far as you need any kind of structural analysis. This actually will fit into the organization, uh, onto the buildings nicely, because again, it's just replacing the concrete 
that you've already decided to use. Mounting options, uh, we've used PV racking, uh, ballast racking. Uh, we can see on the sides here, we also have tabs for any kind of ground mount tabbing, uh, uh, racking as well. And temperature range, you can see here that we can operate from minus 20 to 65 degrees C. This is the ambient operating temperature. This is the outside air of the device. Next slide is about ballasting. And the, the from Panoclar, our partner, when, uh, when you have a design, uh, you will reach out to one of your local sales reps, regional sales managers, they will then take this information, send it off to PanelCloud. PanelCloud will come back with a basically a drawing package. You can see here, PanelCloud will require this. They will actually demonstrate or show where solar leaves will be put. You can see here where there's a two, that means there will be a solar leaf uh, or two ballast blocks. But in this particular case, a one would be one single ballast block, a two could be a solar leaf. Uh, they would provide a map and a drawing uh, of how to installation, install this whole entire system, uh, specifically for your job, for your address. This right here is a good graphic. Um, uh, just it shows clearly where the life of the product is sitting right here on the ballasted racking, the begin panel claw. It fits directly in between. Again, it's a ballast block replacement. Um, just put this here for demonstration purposes. The size of the ballast block, and the size of the inverter. Basically, again, you cut this in half. This is one ballast block, and this is the second ballast block. Again, trying to utilize the weight of the battery as a ballast block replacement. One thing I want to point out again here, you can just see here, this is your input side of the so we'll leave, this is your output side. Uh, and right here is communication. These devices all have wireless communication as well to be able to get information uh, on site and remotely. So you may ask yourself, why? Why the solar leaf? And I think the answer is pretty simple. I think this slide says a lot. Basically, what we're looking at is equipment cost and saying for installing a traditional energy storage system, you know, there's equipment cost on their side and equipment cost on our side, on the auto side. But what's interesting is there's lots of things below the waterline when you're putting in a traditional EAS system as opposed to a Yada system. One of the biggest, big is the engineering and design. That's, that's a huge one, a lot of cost there. Um, a larger system would require fire suppression, uh, probably independent metering, um, some kind of foundation or concrete pad would have to be poured if it's an outside. Um, usually it's on the AC side, so it is a separate perimeter because it's an AC coupled battery system. Tailored for each installation, so there's not a standard installation that you can just have. Um, every single site you do would be different. Thermal management is a huge one, which is something that the solar relief is able to solve quickly. Uh, being on the ASA, AC side, you may have to upgrade the transformer uh, on that particular site. Electrical disconnects, a good bit more cost. Um, and because of the size of the batteries, uh, probably heavy lifting machinery as well, some type of a crane or forklift uh, to be able to get these particular products in, in place. Yada's approach, again, learning from the microinverter world, being able to distribute that storage throughout the rooftop as opposed to a centralized location. So instead of having a, let's say a 50 kilowatt battery downstairs, uh, very heavy and very hard to, to install and man maneuver, now you've got 50 separate batteries throughout the array, um, giving you the same amount of storage, but it's a one person carry. You're talking at 53 pounds, it's under the 80 pound limit, and boom, very easy to manipulate, very easy to install, and like I said, it becomes a ballast block replacement, which is kind of nice. I think this is this is this is where you're going to put the battery. With the, with the Yada solution, that battery location has already been picked. Another reason why 
you want to have an on roof DC coupled system is solar clipping recapture. For those of you that know me out there, I, I am a huge, huge fan of oversizing on the DC size. I want to make sure that when you load up the inverter, you're pushing that inverter as hard as you can. Um, and that sometimes, unfortunately, creates a situation where we have solar clipping. Um, and in this industry, I know solar clipping is not a favorite thing or not a popular thing. But the nice thing about the auto solution, because it is a DC coupled system from the module right into the battery, battery then into the inverter, we're actually able to capture all that extra energy. We're actually able to push out to the inverter the maximum amount. And if there's any excess left over, push that, push that into the battery uh, for future use. You can see here, we're going to, with the DC coupled system, we can actually increase DC ratios to two plus, two times or more. The nice thing about this is if there is any kind of excess, the excess here is stored or charging at this point. So you can see that clipping line right here all day long. The nice thing is later in the day when you have time of use issues um, or demand charges, we can actually discharge. This is actually is a good example of a time of use where it would maybe discharge. As the sun is waning down, we can come on and discharge into the evening. This is a slide that we actually have from the Rocky Mountain Institute. Uh, this has actually been published many years, many years ago. But the nice thing about this is talks about the value of energy storage. And specifically for Yada Energy, uh, we're looking at things like time of use management. We're just where we're actually able to, let's say for example, California, from 4 to 9 p.m., power becomes almost two or three times more expensive depending on your jurisdiction. The nice thing about this is during the day, you're going to actually be able to store the energy that the module is, is, is producing, put it into your battery, and then at a predetermined time, uh, tell the battery to release a, a certain amount of energy um, for a certain length of time. Really, really nice. The second is demand charge reduction. And demand charge reduction is really nice because we are actually able to use CTs and monitor the consumption of the building that this is on. And through the consumption CTs is basically a, a controller. The controller then talks to the gateway, which then talks to the batteries on the roof. So let's just say, for example, you have a, a surge during the day, something happens, you have a lot of a big demand. To mitigate demand charges, the system will observe that peak, or that, that kind of demand that goes up quickly uh, and be able to respond within milliseconds to start pushing energy from the batteries um, including the power coming from the modules um, to mitigate those uh, demand charges. Basically what it'll do is we'll see it, it will push it for 15 minutes to, to meet the demand and then check again in 15 minutes to verify if it continues to continue pushing or it can stop. Increased self-consumption. This right here is another example of customers that perhaps have this installed um, and can use this, you can discharge this power whenever you'd like. Let's say you have some type of machinery that runs at nighttime. Um, you know, there's no solar out there. That's not going to be able to be able to compensate for that. But if you have a battery and you're able to discharge it whenever you'd like, um, let's say the, the, something happens at midnight, you can actually discharge at midnight um, for until two o'clock in the morning to, to reduce uh, though your electric bill cost as well because you've stored all that energy in the battery. Um, and energy arbitrage. This is actually the, the last thing that we go today. Energy arbitrage, for those of you who are not familiar with it, is, is basically the utilities being able to, to kind of reach in. Um, if they, let's say they need power in a certain area um, in your jurisdiction, they can actually reach into your system through the controller uh, and be able to discharge your batteries at any time that they want. The nice thing about that is when they're asking for that power, they're actually willing to pay you for that power. Uh, depending on where you're located, again, that, that may be at a premium as well. So um, that's a nice thing to be able to have that available to them as well. Uh, and you're probably wondering right here, I skipped over backup power. This today is not currently available from Yada Energy, but please stay tuned. That is something that will be coming. Uh, we actually look forward to providing that for you. But again, today we're really focusing on time of use build management, the demand charge reduction, obviously the PV self-consumption and energy arbitrage.
So the next logical question is, okay, this all sounds great, but how do you, how do you do it? What's what's the what's the fine, what's the what's the fine print here? And the, really, the key piece right here is thermal management. As I said a couple of times, we have learned lots of lessons from the microinverter world. You know, ten years ago, if you said hey, we're going to put an inverter on the roof, um, we would all laugh and we was like, "Come on, really? That that doesn't make any sense." But you know what? Ten years later, um, and that has become very dominant in in this world that we live in. And what they've done, and what we've done as well, is mitigated the heat, figured out how to remove heat from the system. And what's nice about this is Yada, uh, we have six patents, all of which are in thermal management. Uh, that is the key secret sauce here, if you will. The perfect solution here is what we're looking at. If you look at the whole entire exploded assembly here, you're looking at a the solar relief itself. It's an aluminum case. Uh, you can see the white here and the white down here. This is the aluminum case we're talking about here. This is actually the, the thing that holds everything together. Inside of here, we actually have a ceramic insulator here, vacuum packed ceramic. Think of it like a thermos. If you uh, pour coffee in the thermos in the morning and then you open it up sometime you know, during the mid morning or even at lunchtime, uh, your coffee's still hot. Uh, that's the same thing right here. Vacuum is a very poor conductor of heat. Uh, so by being able to put the batteries in type of a thermal insulation, uh, we're actually able to maintain the temperature, the right temperature, or the we call, I like to call the sweet spot for the battery. These batteries, uh, LFP, love to live and, and work in a temperature range that's somewhere between 100 degrees F and 70 degrees F. That's the sweet spot, as you see down here. You can see what we're trying to articulate here. Boom, it's very, very critical and very important. The second thing is the battery packs themselves are encapsulated in a phase change material. And phase change material is nice because when you take, it's just physics actually, but once you take a solid and turn it into a liquid, you're actually able to pull a lot more heat away. So by doing that, we're pulling heat away from the batteries, again, trying to maintain that 70 to 100 degrees F, uh, again, for performance and reliability. And the third thing is, it inclu includes the case, is we also include heat pipes uh, on the device as well to pull that heat from the battery packs, from that uh, phase change material out of the device to the cooling fins here you see on the outside. We're gonna dissipate that heat through that piece right there. Again, trying to keep this thing nice and cool between 70 and F for a prolonged life, reliable uh, life. By virtue of the design, we also make it very safe. Um, as you know, the button modules themselves today probably sitting somewhere in the 40 to 45 volt range. So we're under the 80 volt DC. So we're, we're eliminating any kind of arc faults, arc flashes, uh, and we live and work uh, under the 80 volt NEC requirement for touch safe, which is really nice. As I mentioned, LFP chemistry, uh, because it definitely is one of the better technologies out there today. And it's kind of an insurance policy against any kind of thermal runaway. Uh, you, uh, Yada has demonstrated um, twice now, actually interesting enough, uh, the UL 9540A uh, testing uh, at the UL facility in Chicago, uh, where we, it was the, probably the most boring video I've ever seen in my life. But nonetheless, um, we were able to get, we lit up the first battery pack uh, and there was no propagation from one battery pack to the next. Uh, as it says right here, there was no external flaming. Everything was held within the unit itself. Uh, the nice thing about the thermal ceramic and vacuum pack ceramic, it also acts as a fire blanket. So we're trying to we're keep everything inside there and all the heat as well. Um, and, and think about it. If the inverters are on, I'm sorry, the, the batteries are on the roof, they're under each module, that also gives them a minimum of three feet, if not more, between units. So there is little or no chance of any kind of propagation going, going from one solar leaf to another, as opposed to a centralized system where all the batteries are densely packed together. So the chance of propagation, uh, it was much higher. Um, so if, with this particular case, we reduced that. Um, the microinverters we use, just for clarity, uh, are NEC 20, 2023 rapid shutdown compliant. Okay, 
Well, let's just talk about this. We are on our website. You can definitely download this at, uh, at your leisure and read it. Uh, this, this is kind of a, an abridged version of that. But I just want to bring it up because I think it really articulates the, 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 the power of the system. Uh, we have been working with the CSUDH, uh, uh, Dominion Hills, uh, just outside of Los Angeles, just south of Los Angeles, I mean, uh, for a couple of years now. And uh, they've been a fantastic partner of us. And uh, many of you that have lived through the heat, so I think it was 2020 or 2021, or 2020, uh, when Southern California had that amazing heat wave come through. And uh, this is one of our test sites that we've had like, installed since day one, I think, actually. So it's probably early, early 2018, 2019-ish. Um, during that heat wave, uh, we were able to observe the ambient temperatures being somewhere in the 120 um, degrees. Under the module, we were measuring 140 degrees F. But inside the case, inside the device itself, you can see here, the green line is the solar leaf. The green line, even during the peak of the day, we never went above 100 degrees F, proving that our passive heat removal system, uh, it did, did actually work. It did rise. You can definitely see the rise in temperature as the rise of the ambient temperature went up. The rise inside the device came up, but never once did it go above that 100 degrees, which is our sweet spot. This right here, I can up on the while while we're on the slide, you guys can take out your phones and scan that uh, to make find yourself to the website to uh, to download this case study. You can see all the details of it. Uh, but this right here is just another graphical representation of a typical day. So this is I just picked two different days here, June 10th, and this is September 6th. Just gives you an idea as far as the the typical patterns that you will see for charging and discharging. Um, you can see this is your standard bell curve here, so coming up and coming down throughout the day. Same here, but the bell curve changes depending on weather, depending on time of year. Uh, below, you can see this is your typical charging pattern. This is right here. This section below is your solar leaf charging. And in the afternoon, you can see here, because of the time of use that we set on this device at 4 p.m., this discharges, and it discharges from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. at a certain rate. And again, the discharges actually can be set for a certain power output uh, and certain time frame and a certain time. And you, you can do it multiple times today. Let's say you wanted to discharge it at noon, and again at three, and again at five. Uh, you know, for half an hour, you could do that as well. It's all very flexible. It can be set up in the what we call a Yacht of Vision system. All right, let's talk about a typical system configuration for this PV coupled system. <clears throat> this right here is just to talk quickly talk about the two different configurations that we currently offer, um, both in 208 volt three phase. Um, this right here is what we call our DPI microinverter. But this particular device, it can put out 1,728 watts AC, so 432 AC watts per module. The nice thing about this particular inverter, we can put up to five units on a 10 gauge wire for a total of 20 units. You can see here, we showed that. So you can put up to five units all down to a main service panel. Also comes in a 480 volt version as well. The nice thing about 480 volt version, especially in a commercial environment, you're going from one module to 44 modules. You're going to put up to 11 DPIs on a single 30 amp, um, I'm sorry, it's a 10 gauge wire, trunk cable, all the way down to the main service panel. A three, 30 amp, three pole, single throw breaker. Again, simple solar. Uh, I also just want to mention that we also, this was pumped up to 1800 watts, so 450 watts AC out per channel. So we're going to be able to accommodate those larger wattage modules. I think that the biggest one we sell today is 550, but you could put a larger, much larger as well because of that solar clipping and solar retention. The next slide right here just talks about the solar leaf architecture. Here you see we have a single module going to a single solar leaf down to a single channel 
on the DPI microinverter. It could be 208, could be 480, whatever it is. But the first for this example is 208. Again, module into a solar leaf into another channel, four channel microinverter. But people always ask, well, what if I don't need you know, that much storage? Maybe I only need, you know, let's say I do a 50 kilowatt system, I need 25 kilowatts. That's fine. That's why we call it the DPI, the dual power input inverter. This inverter is able to take input from the battery or the solar leaf in this case, or directly from the module in this particular graphic. Again, down to that trunk cable, that 10 gauge, down to a 30 amp three pole breaker. The nice thing about the system, it is retrofitable. Let's say today you could actually install just the PV and the inverters, and then go back and retrofit uh, with batteries. Or you could start with batteries. Or let's say you start with 25 kilowatts and you realize you need 50 kilowatts. It's as simple as lifting the module, placing the battery, move, basically removing the ballast blocks, putting the battery in, and plugging the module into the input of the battery, and then the output of the battery into the inverter. Uh, no configuration needed. It's already done per virtue of the, the custom framework in the inverter. All right. I'm going to pause on these slides for a few seconds here. So anybody that wants to get a hold of the specification sheets for the solar leaf, uh, they're readily available online. Uh, so please scan that right there. Some of the key features, I just want to just going to review while we're here and while we're just waiting to let everybody scan it. Um, like we mentioned, the input for this particular device up from up to 750 watt modules uh, is what we're saying. 60, 72, 120, and 144 module compatibility, no cell compatibility. Um, let's see what else is one kilowatt hour battery. Lithium ion phosphate and roughly, like I said, 53 pounds. Okay, moving on. I'll pause here for a moment as well. This is the DPI. The DPI at 208 and 480 volts. I, want, I do want to point out that there are two different SKUs for this. Uh, we tried to put it all into one package. That is not uh, possible uh, for reliability. So there are two different SKUs. But the nice thing again is 208 volts and 480 volt versions. Maximum power output for the 208, 1728. Maximum output for the 480 is 1800. All MC4 connectors as well, in case anyone was curious, those are all the MC4s here uh, with a single AC output. Meets all the requirements for rapid shutdown, NEC 690.12. Uh, UL 1741 SA, um, SB. All right. And the last piece of the puzzle is the monitoring. The nice thing about this, is what we call Yada Vision. Inside of Yada Vision, you're actually able to monitor both the, the, the solar leaves and the DPIs in a single location. Being able to see critical information like voltages, state of charge, uh, being able to tell the batteries when to charge and when to discharge, um, setting up the demand charge systems, showing performance um, daily. So you're gonna have some kind of a daily report of what you're seeing, production, consumption, also storage. Communicates in real time. That real time, the, the communication or at least the data that you get from the site is uh, every five minutes. It goes out and polls each of the products, the inverters and the battery solar leaf to every five minutes. So you're getting 12 polls per hour uh, and four pushes of that data up to the cloud. The other nice piece about this as well is, especially as in a service world, if there's any kind of service, especially CNI, uh, you're actually able to see uh, what's going on at any particular site at any given time. If there are any issues on that site, you'll be able to see them clearly um, and then be able to diagnose them. The other nice part about the system is 
if there are any issues on the site, uh, you will be notified of those. So you will get an email from Yacht Energy that will clearly state uh, which site is having an issue, perhaps which inverter is having an issue, and, and even which channel is having an issue. Um, so it will send you with information to be able to diagnose uh, some of the issues. Nice thing is you're actually able to get aggregate reports. You see right here, you're gonna be able to look at basically information throughout the month. What was the power production of this particular site throughout the month, day by day by day by day? Um, all in comparison, all readily available to you at any given time. If you want to, you can also dig down into each of the devices, both the inverters and the solar leaves. You may be able to see performance on any given day. You can pick a date, you can pick a serial number of a device, you can pick a channel to view and then graph it. You'll be able to see that, that solar curve. Um, if there's any kind of issues, you'll be able to easily see them and diagnose them right from this data. In Yada Vision as well, there's also the ability to go back in time and pull reports. Uh, you'll be able to see year by year by year of the data. One thing that we do not do is we do not truncate any of the data that's been created. Any data from the day that this thing was plugged in and started um, till now uh, is readily available at your fingertips to be able to pull reports uh, and, and be able to compare month by month, year by year, or even day by day if you'd like. One thing we're doing right now, uh, not completely baked, and we are actually we're putting it all together right now is what we call the Yacht of Vision. We're pulling everything together in one single portal to be able to see your solar production, your battery storage, your state of charge, all your temperatures, voltages, currents, um, everything you could think of channel by channel, module by module, uh, all in one special location. You'll have an online version uh, on the computer, but you'll also be able to have it on your handheld app as well. Okay, so in review, what we're looking at here is again, the auto module. The model module will plug directly into the solar leaf. Solar leaf has an output that will go into the Yada DPI. The Yada DPI will then go out into the electrical system, the electrical box. As you see here from this, this picture here as well, the racking, ballast mount, the solar leaf on that racking, the DPI adjacent to it, and then the module covering all of that, all living in harmony on the roof. And again, just in review, the biggest advantage, low installation costs, right? I mean, think about we're, we're actually offsetting ballast costs, we're reducing the solar BOS, Everything's on the roof. We're not having these larger devices. We don't have to pour concrete. We don't have to pull a different permit. We don't have to change the transformers. A lot of things that are there that is a lot of, like I said, below the waterline uh, set cost savings. Uh, efficiency, right? If we're a DC coupled system. It's not AC coupled. We're going off the module directly into the battery. You know, so we're reducing the, the transition from DC to AC back to DC back to AC. Um, and scales. Like I said, you, you have a known cost for the battery. Um, you can add batteries at any time. Um, you know, so even, even after installation, you can continue to adding. Now, the only limitation you have is the number of modules that you have on that roof. That is the only limitation. Um, easy to implement. Install with PV solar. It's, it's just kind of an obvious thing, right? Right there, boom, done. Accommodate future load demands. You can actually increase, as I just mentioned. If you need more battery storage, it can be added. No more footprint or permitting, right? Again, there's some of the soft costs. But just add, lift the module up, put a battery down, plug it in, and walk away. There's nothing to configure. It's already done. And safest, right? Right there, safe lift LIFO battery chemistry. 95, all the UL testing for 9540 and low voltage systems with monitoring, as I just mentioned. Right? Thank you, Christopher.
Um, we'll be getting to the Q&A and the announcement of who won the swag prize in just a second. But first, I'd like to draw some attention to uh, some of our partners. We have many partners, and these are just a few. You can see here we've got a number of different um, distribution, manufacturing, and other partners that we uh, are proud to be paired with. Um, right now, you can find our entire array of products available at um, your local Green Tech, um, your local uh, Kranich, or Power Store. Um, so you can reach out to us uh, for help in designing any of these projects. And if you have a relationship with any of these distributors, they'll be happy to, uh, to get you any of the most up-to-date pricing information they've got available. And we're more than just a uh, equipment manufacturer. We do a number of different things. We can't just do that. We've really got to hold the, our, our customers' hands for a while. This is a relatively new concept. Um, and we understand that. So we want to make it easy for you. Um, we do solar and storage analytics. We do engineering and plan sets, uh, equipment procurement, installation and construction support. In fact, we insist on some of the medium to larger size installs and really any of the first solar leaf installs. We'd love to drop somebody in one of our install specialists to kind of teach you all the tips and tricks for best practices. More likely than that, you'll get Chris in person out on your job site for the first one or two of your jobs to make sure that you know how these things are, uh, are working. And these are all added benefits. There's no additional cost for any of these things. And we also do project finance, uh, take care of maintenance. So you name it, we do it. The winner of our yada yada. <laughs> And I caught myself there. The Yada Swag giveaway is uh, Mr. Dean Armentrout. So Dean, uh, take a look in your inbox. Somebody from the marketing team will be reaching out to you about how we can get you uh, the swag package. Congratulations. We got a lot of questions today, Chris. Do you have a sip of water yet? I am ready. You're ready. Okay. All right. We're going to try to get to as many of these as we can. There are a ton today as we anticipate something uh, Anticipated a lot of questions for our product that is uh, as unique and different and groundbreaking as the leaf. So, and some of this stuff um, may be redundant. We may have touched on it in the webinar, but that's okay. There's a lot of information coming pretty quickly, um, and it doesn't hurt to go over some of these things again. Um, what are, Chris, what are the cycling control strategies it can do? Time of use, demand response? Uh, well, definitely time of use. I mean, time of use is time of use and demand drive are probably the two biggest uh, factors that we play with today. And I, and I would say even time of use is probably the biggest, uh, especially in the California market or any other market where time of use is actually big. Uh, the nice thing is you're actually able to produce and save your energy in the morning uh, and then being able to basically smooth out your bell curve. You know, your typical bell curve is it starts low in the morning, goes high peak in the noon and kind of wanes off in the afternoon. The nice thing about that is you can take that wane and turn it into, you know, 450 watts coming off that inverter, uh, you know, until into the evening to kind of mitigate any kind of cost during that higher peak time. I'm going to kind of tack on to that one a little bit. Um, what programming can be applied to the solar leaf? Can we program it to discharge from 4 to 9 p.m., 7 to 9 p.m.? What about sending it peak demand discharge signals? Oh, the program, pro, programming is simple. So basically, basically you log, log on to the AutoVision system, uh, basically go into your site and be able to pre-program. So you can actually pre-program as far as, you know, when you want to discharge uh, and how much and for, and for how long. So you basically have three parameters that you can play with. Let's just say, for example, I want to come on at 4 p.m. and I want to discharge 250 watts for two hours. Uh, boom, just set that up, hit save, and it will send a command to the, uh, to the controller and then at 4 p.m. local time, it will, it will enact my, my command. Um, you can have multiple of those per day. Um, your second part of your question is the demand charge reduction. That requires a, a separate controller to being able to monitor the building consumption. Uh, when we see a, a, a large swing, uh, what we know what we're producing on the roof, uh, and we know what the building is consuming. So if the building consumes more than we're producing, at that point, the controller will say, okay, I need to add more power and we'll push power out of the batteries at that instant um, to meet that demand. And again, re reduce those charges. All right, um, got some questions about panels. Um, have you certified other solar panels to be used with other 
the other YANA components? Uh, so solar panels are agnostic. Uh, we really don't care. Uh, the solar leaf doesn't care. Uh, what I care about is the input voltage. Uh, the maximum input voltage uh, is basically you know, 50, 60 volts. Uh, so if it's below 60, I mean, we want it to be in that sweet spot. We want it to be in that MPPT range of anywhere between 22 and, and 48 is, is really the, the sweetest spot we could possibly be in uh, to make some maximum amount of power. But yeah, so we're agnostic on module. It could be, it could be our module, it could be any other module you have. Uh, again, it just has to meet the voltage and current requirements. Well, speaking for the sales team, we are not agnostic. We'd love for you to use our Yada branded modules, of course, available um, through distribution. But um, Chris is right. We're agnostic. There are, um, are any module you can use. There are certain uh, benefits of using the Yada module, though, right, Chris? Absolutely. I mean, the Yada module is actually very unique in the sense that it has longer leads. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's the secret sauce right there. Having a two and a half meter lead on the back of a module especially anybody that's used microinverters in the past, uh, sometimes it's difficult to, to get the leads into the microinverter or into the battery uh, with these little shorter stubs that, they're, that the module manufacturers are putting out today. By having the two and a half meter leads, um, I've never heard anybody complain about having too much wire. I've heard people complain about not, not having enough wire. Um, the other problem that we, we've seen in the past is, you know, by not having enough wire, it forces an extra step of having to create or make uh, DC extensions, either buy them or make them on the roof. Um, so that's just another failure point. So by buying the Yara modules, we're actually able to give you a better product and a higher reliability because we're reducing the number of failure points along the way. Um, let's see, we've got a number of good questions. Um, all right, so is... Yada tested, certified with any other ballasted racking solutions, specifically like an Iron Ridge or a Unirack, something like that. I think people have questions about um, our relationship with Panel Claw, um, the things that Panel Claw does for us, and can you use other racking solutions? Absolutely, you can use whatever you'd like. Uh, if there's a, pan is there a racking solution that you particularly want us to work with and partner with, uh, we'd be happy to uh, you know, get that information uh, work with them and, and create a custom solution. I said with Panaclaw, it is absolutely 100% compatible, uh, custom. Uh, but we we have worked with other racking companies in the past as well. Uh, the tabs that I that I kind of pointed out on there um, for Unirack uh, for mounting of a, kind of a, a ground mount. Uh, so we have done it in the past. Uh, definitely workable, um, and would love to have more partners uh, join us uh, in this mission to put solar and storage on the roofs. Um, yeah, I, I think too, also it's important to note the panel claw will do things like uh, structural calculations for permits. So they, they do a lot of the heavy lifting on that side too. Um, again, important to note that panel claw is um, a great fit for our product using the solar leaf. Another distinction I want to make is, make is that you can use our microinverters, the 208 and the 48 without the solar leaf. You don't need to use the battery. We'd love for you to use the battery, but maybe it doesn't make sense in this particular install that you're working on. You can use our microinverters. Uh, in any three-phase installation, uh, 208 or 480, with or without um, right. the solar leaf and with any racking solution that is available to you. But panel claw right now um, is, is pretty specific to our solution with the solar leaf. Um, let's see. Uh, are the DPI 208 and DPI 480 microinverters three-phase output? which I think I just answered, they are indeed, or yeah. each one single phase out. And can you spread them out as like one and three on A and B, one and three on B and C, one and three on C and A? There's absolutely no need because it's actually a three phase, it's a true three phase product. So basically it's, it's, it's phase monitored and phase balanced right at the inverter. So at that output right there, you have three very balanced lines and three monitored lines. Um, yeah, there, there's not, like in, the, like in the old days, you know, two years ago, uh, everyone was doing this kind of phase balancing themselves, use single phase inverters and kind of dance around the triangle, you know, would connect one set to A and B, one set to B and C, and one set to B or C back to A. Um, with this three phase, true three phase microinverter, it's no longer necessary. Yeah, we don't, we don't miss that phase balance portion of, of things. Certainly do we, Chris, it's nice to have a true three phase micro. Um, the last year or so we had to, Phase balance everything that made things. Um, yeah, it's it's a game changer. It really is a game changer yeah. because 
you basically you're hooking up in the middle of 208, you're putting five of these units down to a simple three pole single throw 30 amp breaker. Um, again, I guess simple solar is what I always say because it's it is just that simple. The nice thing about it too is this this solution, it takes a residential installer and can turn them into a commercial installer overnight because it is so simple. Um, so somebody said, thank you so much, Chris, for the informative presentation. I think that he speaks for everyone. Thank you, Chris, for the informative presentation, but I still don't get the battery connections. Where does the battery connect and how the solution takes care about the battery charging and discharging? Well, battery lives on the roof. So think of it, and this is a picture you see on the screen right here. You can see the battery and it's sitting right here under this module. There's, there's no module on top of here, obviously, but, uh, and there's an inverter just adjacent to it right here. So the battery, so the module itself has leads that come up, the plus and minus, those plug directly into the solar relief. From the solar relief, it goes output into the inverter. So the, the battery itself lives and, is and resides on the roof. Inside the solar relief, we have what's called a battery management system or a short BMS. The BMS is monitoring the input power from the module. It's monitoring the state of charge for the battery. Um, and it's also looking, listening or, or applying the rules that have been applied for the discharge times and rates and things like that as well. So let's say for example, the, the morning comes up, the battery is at 20%. It says, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm going to give, uh, the module is going to give me some power. I'm going to charge the battery 100% and then produce power onto the microinverter. Or you could do 50-50. You could say, oh, I'm going to get some power coming off the module, pass it through, and 50% of that power goes into the battery for charging. Um, all of this can be programmed. But to answer your question, I guess the, the battery itself, the solar leaf, is resident on the rails, on the racking, on the roof, under the modules. We've got still a lot of questions, but unfortunately we're, we're tight on time. Um, I can assure you that we're taking a, a, a list of these questions that we didn't get to you. I know there's a lot of questions about, are you certified for this? Are you able to be used with this utility? We'll make sure that we follow up with you. Either somebody from the sales or marketing side will, will, will follow up with your questions and be in touch. There will be a recording available made of this for you to be able to review if you happen to come late. I'm sorry we couldn't get to all of your questions. I'm really just um, encouraged um, by the enthusiasm and a, a tad overwhelmed by the volume of, of uh, information that you guys are requesting. I think that's a great sign for us. Or maybe it tells us there's a couple things that we need to focus on a little bit more for the next webinar. So we're thankful for your feedback. Um, there are a few places that you can meet us in person, specifically Chris and I in person. We will be at the Napstep conference. It's probably my favorite conference to do every year. I find it to be the most informative. If you've never been, I highly recommend attending. Uh, that's at the end of March this month um, at the St. Charles Convention Center in St. Charles. Um, we have the NFPA conference coming up in June in Las Vegas. I may find a way to make it there myself. I haven't been to Vegas in a little while since the last time we had, uh, I think, um, SPI now RE plus there. So we will be there. Also, um, keep an eye out. If you're local to Texas, we have a, an event that we're having at our facility um, a week from this coming Saturday during the South by Southwest uh, events. You can come on by, have a drink, get to see the team, walk around the office. We've got a really impressive facility. It's pretty cool. Um, it's not just cubicles. It's uh, We've got a lot going on. But anyway, yeah, stop by the office. Um, like I said, a week from this coming Saturday, we'll be having a, a cocktail party uh, that Saturday evening. Um, we got a lot of different resources. Uh, I'm always available. You can reach uh, me at Ryan at yadaenergy.com or Chris at Chris at yadaenergy.com. We keep it real simple. We got here early enough that we got the email addresses without the last names. You just need to know our first. Um, the next webinar that we're going to do in the Yada Know series is the step-by-step -step guide to installing the um, microinverter, the 208 and the 40. Like I said, that microinverter can be used with or without the solar leaf. So if you're interested in this three-phase product, um, the other cool thing about this product is like, it's available. We have it. There's no six to nine month wait list like there is for other three phase 208 products. It's available. We've got a few in the warehouse. Um, so reach out to us uh, or distribution if you'd like to get pricing. Um, you can find us on all of our social media platforms uh, at yachtenergy.com on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook, our website yachtenergy.com. 
the general support line, reach out to our good friend Gabe and our domestic support team that we have. Our entire support team is based in Austin, U.S. based, bilingual uh, in Austin. You can get them at support at yadaenergy.com. And of course, you can use the old-fashioned way, pick up the phone and call us at 512-856-7788. I'd like to thank you all for taking time out of your busy day to spend it with Christopher and I for this afternoon. Uh, again, we're happy to answer all your questions. We'll be following up with some information uh, if you asked a question, um, and please don't be a stranger. Make sure that you find us on our uh, personal social medias on LinkedIn, and uh, we'll be happy to answer any other questions that you might have. Be well. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone.